always my soulmate. By Walter Melon's Melon Felon. Chapter 7. Inked. Ever since he was little, Victor had found himself doodling on his skin, no matter where he was. At school, at home, in between practices. No matter what, Victor always seemed to have a collection of pens on hand so he could draw on himself. And even though his parents had been a bit horrified, because what would his soulmate think? He didn't stop. Victor found entertainment in it, and he could only hope that his soulmate liked it as well. Victor wasn't going to stop anytime soon. Though he found it odd that his soulmate never doodled anything. Most children drew on themselves at least once in their lives, right? As he grew, Victor's doodles took on more detail. Enough that he learned how to hold his pen in different ways in order to apply different pressures for shading. His most amazing masterpiece so far was of a tiny ballerina in point. He hadn't expected to get anything in return, but suddenly a small star appeared on his hand, just above the ballerina's outstretched hand, as if she was reaching for the stars. Blinking and feeling a small thrill of excitement run through his body, Victor set to doodling more details on her skirt. A moment later, the ballerina had a companion who was mimicking her movements. Smiling, Victor set to adding more detail to his clothes, drawing small stars on the man's jacket. After that, he added a small smiley face in appreciation and got a thumbs up in return. For the first time in his 10 years, Victor was having true fun outside of the ice rink. <laughs> when Yuri was 14, he'd found himself sitting on the roof of the school writing a very detailed study guide on his hand and forearm. He hadn't taken into account that he was most likely covering his soulmate in all of his notes. However, it was brought to his attention when he got home, where his other arm had been covered in a foreign language. He used the online translator and scribbled a poor copy of some of them with his stylus onto his tablet. It came back as discovered Russian. His soulmate was a Russian, or at least had grown up in Russia. It was such an interesting cultural mix, but it was also slightly worrying. Would he ever get to meet them? Also, the notes seemed to have something to do with sports, though the online translator could not be trusted in the least. They usually failed beyond identifying languages. Still, this was a new piece of insight that he was glad for. It was time to learn Russian. Never have known that his soulmate spoke fluent Japanese had those notes not been made that day. It was what spurred him on to learning Japanese, simply to eliminate the cultural divide as quickly as possible. Japanese was harder to learn than English, that was for certain, but it was worth it. One day, during his small rebellion in Korea, Victor decided that he wanted to be able to share something special with his soulmate, something beyond little doodles on their hands that they helped complete for each other. In a small tattoo shop in Seoul, Victor found himself confronted with a man who did not know his status as a world-known figure skater. He probably wouldn't care either. He simply did his job, and that was that. Victor wondered when his soulmate would notice it. He hoped they would like it. Yuri screamed himself hoarse when the image appeared on his back one day. He'd simply been in the shower doing his business when something red caught his eye. It curled a bit around his hips, and it wouldn't wash off no matter how much he tried. Stepping out from under the hot spray, he turned into the mirror and gaped at the vision that awaited him. He turned more fully, allowing himself to see his back in the mirror and found a very large dragon staring back at him. Or rather, the outline of a dragon. It hadn't been colored or shaded yet, so it was incomplete. But still, as Yuri had never even considered getting a tattoo before, he knew it wasn't him. It was his soulmate. His soulmate had decided to go and get a tattoo to share between them. The time and pain they must have sacrificed. Yuri ran a hand over the permanently stained skin. It was nice. He wanted to pay them back. Victor, your hand! Looking down, Victor found that his entire left hand was covered in intricate designs that he recognized as henna. A very particular type of art. It was beautiful, too. Of course, Yakov looked at disturbed, but it wasn't as if it was his business anyway, so Victor didn't care. His soulmate had gone out and done this in response to the dragon tattoo, he was certain. 
Victor knew he'd have to go back someday and get it finished, but his schedule was very tight and troublesome, what with the training constantly and tournaments he was entering. Still, he would finish it at some point. Finding himself filled with renewed vigor, Victor applied himself twice as hard in training that day, managing to land every jump perfectly several times in a row. Yuri, that was beautiful! The brunette flushed at the praise. He'd been working extra hard on his step sequences because they seemed to be his best. Steps and spins. Yuki was bouncing up and down, clapping her hands. I wasn't expecting you to improve this much. How are your jumps? He winced. The Zelka was troublesome, but my triple axle is nearly perfect. Spending all that time in America seems to have a good effect on you. You're trying a lot harder and seem to be more competitive. Yeah, but I still get stage fright easily. He mumbled in defeat. Maybe you just need the proper coach or something. Yuri wasn't sure it was his coach's fault. The dragon was finished. Victor was immensely proud of it. A fierce red and black creature that demanded attention. It took up the entire span of his back and curled around his body in the most intimate of places, claws around the hips and tail trailing around to rest across the pubic bone. He liked it and hoped his soulmate liked it as well. Looking down at his hands, he was shocked to see a message joining him. It's beautiful. I love it. Perfect English. Victor was suddenly glad to have learned English. Panicking, he looked around for a pen and dove into his bed in order to get comfortable. I hope you would. A smiley face was his answer. Unable to let this go, Victor decided to ask something that had been on his mind. How do you actually drop on these? The answer was positive. So if Victor wanted to meet his soulmate, he'd have to go to Japan. That could be easily arranged. What are your hobbies? Victor smiled at the sudden question and proceeded to list his daytime activities. In return, he learned some things about his soulmate and rolled over, smiling happily at the new revelations. Yuri sighed, incredibly embarrassed and frustrated. He'd made it to a major competition and ended up failing spectacularly. And on top of that, Victor Nikimarov was a complete douche, you know. An attractive one, but a douche nonetheless. Who doesn't know their fellow competitors? Yuri knew everyone, even if they made him nervous most of the time. He made it a point to at least know of everyone in case he had to speak with them personally. And Yuri didn't need a photo of Victor. His room in Japan was covered in enough as it was. He sighed, feeling absolutely drained. He wanted to go home, go to bed, and not wake up. That would be lovely. How are you? Victor waited and waited, but the response was slow. Not well. With a frown, Victor asked why. I embarrassed myself terribly, and now I'm not sure I want to keep up my career. Victor sat up, not liking the dejected tone in the message. You can't give up! You'll hate yourself! Just take a small break, wait a while, and then come back! It'll be fine, you'll see! There was a small smiley in response, and Victor hoped he'd managed to appease his soulmate a bit. Victor didn't like thoughts of giving up. He hoped that his soulmate kept on. Are you ever going to tell me your name? Maybe. Skating was like breathing in a sense. It made him feel good. And when he wasn't in front of a judging crowd, he felt so much better, so much more freer with himself. Yuko obviously got a kick out of his performance and applauded with all of her heart. Her praises and concerns heard and acknowledged. He had been depressed over his failings, but his soulmate had helped him suck it up. He was still a little unstable and would regularly get into a slump, but Yuri wasn't going to let it stop him. His life was already ruled by too much anxiety. He didn't want anything else to have control over him. Skating was his life, and it was just something that he loved to do. So he wasn't going to let his failure control his life any longer. Katsuki Yuri was interesting. Victor watched his rendition of Victor's performance over and over. He watched on various technology. He slowed everything down to half speed in order to properly evaluate the man's skills. But it was as if he had become Victor Nakivarov himself. He wasn't shy or twitchy. He'd somehow modeled his entire demeanor after Victor's during the original performance. It was like looking at a shorter copy of himself in that small ice rink. 
the ice rink was so small that his program had to be modified to fit it. The fact was, that performance had happened less than a month ago and had taken months of preparation for Victor to accomplish it. How could this Japanese skater manage to perfect it in such a short time? Victor could pick up small mistakes and shaky footing, but overall it was perfect. Might even receive a score close to enough to Victor's if it was being properly judged. How did Katsuki Yuri go from a bundle of nerves that lost in front of one of the largest crowds in the world to a mini Victor? What was his secret? While mimicking Victor, he seemed to even take on Victor's confidence. There was no fear, no worry. Yuri allowed himself to feel the music and the performance in a way that Victor hadn't. Overall, he felt the performance was better than the original and personally decided that the title tried to state was wrong. Yuri had skated the program amazingly. Victor was slightly ashamed. His disinterest had come upon him so suddenly that his performance had been disappointing. He despised it, watching over and over and finding it lacking something. And it appeared that Katsuki Yuri had that something. An idea hit him then and he groped around for a pen. I'm coming to Japan soon. We should meet up at some point. It took a moment, but then there was a blessed response. Really? For how long? Victor was already looking up Katsuki Yuri's hometown and found himself grinning. He was going on a trip to find himself. Yuri hastened his training. His soulmate was coming to Japan at some point and even wanted to meet up. This meant that he had to get back in shape as soon as possible. While not too terribly conscious about his weight, people kept drawing attention to it as if it was something super bad and he was sick of it. If another person called him Biglet, he was going to scream. So what better way to get it to stop than to just lose the weight and make them all shut the hell up? Also, he might be lightly panicking over meeting his soulmates. He still didn't know their name or gender, or even age. He didn't want to accidentally insult them, but he wanted it to be a surprise. When Yuri got home that night, he found that it had snowed lightly. It was April, yet it was snowing like it was still winter. He could already foresee the hours of shoveling that he was going to have to do in the morning. He was not looking forward to it. Yuri-chan, you want some katsudon? The temptation was real. The desire for the mouth-watering meal of the kami was so very real. But no, not right now. He shook his head. I can't afford that right now. His mother smiled with understanding. You might want to know that we have a visitor who will be staying with us for a while. So if you see a dog that looks just like Vika-chan, don't panic. She skipped away then, leaving him in confusion. Arf! Startled. He looked down and moved to slide the door open, finding a poodle that was much larger than Vikachan had been, sitting there, tail wagging. What the heck? He belongs to our guest, his father said as he passed by, holding a basket. I didn't know foreigners traveled with their pets. He's in the spring if you wanted to know. Yuri's stomach dropped. Victor's first impression of Katsuki Yuri was that he was different than expected. In the video, he'd been a little chubby, but not overly so. Right now, the young man was in fact not chubby in the least. Smaller than expected, but rather fit if his tight red shirt was anything to go by. With a smile, Victor stood proudly showing off his own body and announcing his intentions to train Yuri into the ground in order to make him win the Grand Prix Final. Yuri flushed and looked away. Are you going to put clothes on anytime soon, or would you prefer to finish your bath first? It took Victor a moment, but then his mouth dropped. Yuri had spoken in near perfect fashion! When the other noticed Victor's astonishment, he flushed harder. My soulmate is Russian, so I figured I'd learn it to make it easier on both of us. Though my writing is still lacking, but I can at least verbally converse. So, Victor wasn't the only person willing to learn another language for his soulmate. His opinion of Katsuki Yuri had just risen several points. Also, hearing someone foreign speaking his native tongue was obviously impressive, and he was appreciative of the efforts, even if they weren't for him. I'm sure your soulmate will be thankful, the older man assured with a bright smile usually reserved for fans. Yuri nodded absently and turned. Come out when you're done. The touching 
had to be a Russian thing. Yuri had gone to university in America and had traveled all over the world, but no one had ever been as tactile as Viktor Nikiforov was. And he had to reluctantly take back his assessment. The man wasn't a douche, which actually made him feel better. To look up to a horrible person would then make him feel horrible. But Victor did get a bit haughty at times, whether he noticed it or not. All that privilege must have been a normal thing, because he just did things without expecting consequences. Like how he liked to hang all over Yuri, or the fact that when he drank too much, he'd start stripping and then hang all over Yuri. And Yuri had to learn to get used to it, because Victor wasn't going to be changing anytime soon. At least he wasn't groping Yuri, which was a lot better than some other people that Yuri had met before. Yuri, we don't need to have any practice today. I'm going to be a little busy. Yuri sat in relief. He was meeting his soulmate and didn't want to have to explain why he needed a day off. Okay, have fun, I guess. Victor beamed. I'm hoping I will. Fingers crossed. Victor dashed from the room, leaving Yuri to his own thoughts. Victor flipped the compact open and raised his pen to his face. In order to better notice who his soulmate was, he decided he was going to doodle a small heart on his left cheek. Anyone who walked in with a heart on their face had to be his soulmate. It was genius! The shop door opened again and he gaped when... Yuri, of all people, walked in a bright red heart on his cheek. Yuri then lifted a pen and wrote something on his hand. Looking down, Victor saw the words, I'm here, awaiting him. Katsuki Yuri was his soulmate. Yuri was his soulmate! Victor lunged out of his seat in order to grab the younger man into a tight hug. His dear Yuri was actually his! And there he'd been feeling guilty for being a little smitten with the other. But it was okay now. V Victor? The Burnett standard probably worried over the insistent rubbing. I find that I'm very lucky. He whispered before deciding to kiss. Yuri, senseless. And if he managed to make Yuri cry for being overstimulated later on, that was no one's business but theirs.